Hi there, YouTube community. Dominic, the CX guy. Dominic, the Roca guy now. It's your favorite customer experience guy, Dominic. For those of you who are visiting for the first time, my name is Dominic. I'm a Zendesk consultant, a customer experience consultant. I've been one for the past nine years, almost. I have uh, worked directly at Zendesk. Uh, we are a team of 12 now under this branding Roca business processes. And uh, yeah, so we are happy to share some of our knowledge the stuff that you can figure out on your own uh, that you find out on this channel, obviously we can help you with that. That's part of our living, right? We're Zendesk consultants and we do, we make a living out of this. Um, just wanted to point, point that out. So I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a new addition for those of you who've been here before. It's this microphone that I'm using now, trying to upgrade the YouTube channel and give a better experience for you guys. Hopefully this can this is better. Actually, I have no idea how good it is or bad. It's the first video I'm recording with this, so hopefully this can only get better. I also got this light here, which I have no idea if it's actually I look I look worse actually to be honest. But anyway, we're we're just going to go ahead with this with this video. It doesn't matter. All righty. So today's topic is going to be how do I close a ticket? So question from the community. Very very interesting. Before we begin on uh, discussing on how to close a ticket, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Please uh, like the video, comment if you want to see some special content. I always get back to you. And I'm always intrigued to hear new suggest video suggestion ideas. And I, uh, depending on my time and availability, I will create those videos. Not all of them, obviously. And of course, if you ask nicely, if you're going to be rude, which, well, some people are, I won't even bother, not even to answer. So. Uh, how do I close the ticket? So it's worth actually talking a little bit about Zendesk and uh, the off-the-shelf functionality that comes along with it. So Zendesk, as you already know, and you're probably here, is uh, our favorite customer experience tool that we use and uh, we've been using for many years, which we love. And um, yeah, it uh, we pride ourselves when using Zendesk with the fact that it's uh, based in customer experience, right? So all the tools out there, majority of them have started out from a different branch. For example, like Salesforce has started, uh, has created this department of customer service, which, uh, well, from a background of sales, right? Uh, Microsoft Dynamics is also into customer service right now, customer support. And you know where that started, right? So it's a, an a operating system that just uh, thought about, you know, acquiring some users and uh, attacking a new market, which is this one of customer service, customer support. And, uh, well, these are, let's say, the main players. Um, and then there's, uh, I don't want to get into other details. There's Freshdesk, of course, which is essentially a knockoff of Zendesk and it's uh, half the price. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it's a new project, not uh, as mature as Zendesk and not as flexible to integrate with other systems. Anyways, let's not get into that uh, detail right now. So let's talk about the customer experience uh, that Zendesk offers off the shelf, right? So it's based in customer experience. That's how the company started initially as, uh, as uh, coming from a background of customer experience and then um, yeah, bringing a bunch of functionality uh, directly built in. So one of those functionalities is closing a ticket two days or four days. Actually, that's the default. Four days after a ticket has been set to solve. Right, so let's unpack this and talk a little bit about the Zendesk statuses, right? So the ticket, whenever it comes into the system, is in status new. Then we assign it to someone and the customer gets back to us and we do back and forth. Whenever the customer gets back to us, status open, right? Which means that it requires an action from the agent. Then we have status pending, which means that we're waiting for more information from our customers. Then we have status on hold which is optional, right? This is an additional one which you can activate uh, uh, on request, right? You don't, you just have to go to it and activate it. And uh, after you've activated it, this uh, you use it for escalating, escalating to a partner, escalating to a third party, escalating to your team, escalating to your manager, whatever kind of escalation it is, but you're still doing something internally, right? So it's customers still waiting for you. The service level agreement clock is still ticking. So, yeah. Then there is status solved, right? So whenever we put the, uh, the ticket in status solved, especially for uh, you who are agents out there and, uh, and managers, 
um, that's when you a ticket becomes out of sight, right? So the default functionality or the recommendation is to leave it into status solved for a number of uh, a number of hours, uh, preferably a day, and then you send a customer um, customer satisfaction request to the customer. Hey, would you like to request this to rate this? Obviously, for these, uh, for the let's say the classical kind of channels, right? For uh, email, especially because this is uh, goes out as an email. Now, um, it is it is uh, it is best practice to right now to leave the ticket into state assault for a number of days. Why is this? Is because customers, as you know, as humans do, and uh, we are all uh, part of this uh, part of this. Uh, we might consider that the ticket is actually not solved. We don't have time to, you know, whenever the agent puts the ticket on solve and lets us know that the ticket has been solved, maybe we don't have time to verify that it has been solved, right? Our request. Maybe we still have another question we want to follow up, or it's actually not even solved. It's actually they they uh, they missed what I what you were trying to find out or we were trying to find out with our support request. So if we leave the ticket on uh, on solve status for a few more days, it's good practice because I can get back and the ticket goes back to open, which is great, right? You want to have the same thread, same ticket and uh, uh, deal with it until it's solved. However, if you close it, if you put it in status closed, which is actually the focus of today's conversation, and you'll see why I made all of this uh, short introduction, you whenever the customer gets back to you, they reply in the same thread. They don't see the difference. But if they reply, a new ticket is created, right? So you have a reference to the ticket that an agent has considered solved and it was closed, but a new ticket is open. It's not The old one doesn't go back to open. So this is additional work in the sense that the agent has to you know, navigate between the two tickets and see what the old ticket was about and then answer this new ticket, which doesn't have all that context on and all everything that was discussed. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, best. That's why it's best practice to leave it in solved status for a few days to make sure that it's actually solved, and then uh, you put it in status closed. Now, this is uh, an automation which I'm going to present right now, and I'm going to share my screen. But before that, uh, you need to know the whole picture, and it ends right now. Status closed. It stays like that for a number of 120 days until it gets put in status archived. So status archive, you can still search for it, but however, it does not appear in views uh, because it clogs your system. So imagine if you have uh, millions of tickets and then and you have 100 agents, 200 agents, 500 agents working in Zendesk and uh, they open their views and millions of tickets have to be loaded for each one of these uh, hundreds of agents. Not good, not good. It's, um, it's an overkill for agents in their computer and also for... Um, Zendesk's servers. So yeah, that's the whole picture, right? So after close, there is another one, another hidden one, which is archived. So just so you know the whole story. Now, back to closed. The closed status is, as I said, built in. Let's share. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to walk you through what this looks like. So boom, boom. You should see my screen. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to navigate to the admin center. caffeine. All right, let's go to objects and rules. Scroll down, we go to automations. And automations, just a quick rundown, are business rules that have an if then condition, but have a time component added to them. If you don't know that, you should go and see my other videos. <laughs> I don't know how to link those in the description. I mean, I can link them in the description, but that gives me work. God damn it. Or I can just, you know, hope other cool YouTubers do it like, oh, just click this link here. I don't know how to do that. So I'm sorry. <laughs> if you know how to do these things and you want to help, um, I, I'm, I'm happy to, to uh, yeah, show you how to use Zendesk and you show me how to use YouTube. Automations. So close ticket two days after data is set to solved. Let's open it up and see what it is about. All right. So status is solved. Hours since it has been solved, calendar, graded in 48. Pretty basic, right? What the, what does this mean, right? So we are meeting all of these conditions, right? There's only two of them. And one is that the ticket is in status solved. And then 
it has to be longer than 48 hours in the solved status. Calendar hours, not business. So that's pretty good. And now the actions, perform these actions, ticket status closed. Right? Pretty basic. Uh, it's You can tweak this as you'd like. I normally would recommend leaving this to 96 because it's better practice. It gives some time to get to people to, you know, to actually... Um, recuperate or I don't know re circle back or think about things and um, it's it's good it gives you less stuff to focus on but of course your business is your business and it's different and you make your own choices so you can do this as an, in another way you can use a trigger as well if it matches some conditions then set it to solve you don't you can't do that directly from the agent interface I'm going to jump in here just open some a ticket that we have here, right? Oh, sorry about that. So, right, you don't have the status closed here. So it can only be done by a business rule. So I we walk through this uh, automation, but now let's create a random trigger to set the ticket to solve. And let's just make up, so let's uh, give it a name, close ticket uh, demo for the nice YouTube community. Community. All right, category, I have to give it a category. Yeah, okay, so set triggers. This is a set properties. Then you assign the trigger, sorry, then you assign the, so, ugh, there's so many lessons for you. I, I don't want to jump into things, never mind. So all of these conditions, let's meet condition status. Uh, no, let's do ticket. Uh, no, yeah, type of ticket. Uh, no, let's do something. Uh, let's do form. Form is amazing form. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, let's put um, updated via. Updated via, let's say, is email. Bam. And then um, request type. Request type. Let's see, request type. Request type. Uh, type of request. Let's call that type of request. Here we go. Type of inquiry. Type of inquiry is, let's say, uh, booking failure for some reason. I don't know. I don't like this uh, booking failure and I want to solve it directly. Uh, so these are the all the conditions that have to be met in my uh, trigger, which trigger is a business rule, which relies on if-then conditions. If some conditions are met, then perform some actions. Now, the action is going to be status closed. And there we go, right? So we can set it to closed. And we can't do archive. That's what the system does by itself. You don't have to do anything for it. So, yeah, that's it. Now I have to save it, create it, and uh, boom, that's it. But, um, yeah, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to delete it because... I am. I don't want to mess up my flows in here any more than they are already. <laughs> deactivate. Now I have to go back to this and deactivate it, and I can delete it from here, which I will. But I'm not going to be that thorough today, or am I? Yes. Thankfully, the internet connection is good. So, that's it. That was it. That to, was that complicated? I hope not. <laughs> I hope this helped you. I, yeah, so this is how you go about and understanding the thought process behind uh, closing tickets and what this means as a status and uh, how it can reflect in your flows and uh, how you can leverage it to your advantage. Yeah, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I don't know. Maybe I, probably I need to get a new camera. Hmm. Anyways. I this is the upgrade that I've done so far uh, with the YouTube channel and uh, also uh, yeah ticket status so until next time love you bye.